So good morning everybody. So I am very happy and uh, proud to uh, introduce Ms. Uma, Uma Harati. She stood All India third in this year's uh, civil services examination. <laughs> and she had kindly uh, accepted our invitation to come and address the students exchanging her experience of having prepared for this exam and we are uh, grateful to her. She like you studied here in uh, the GS foundation course way back in 2017 and 18 and uh, I, uh, she will take a 45 minutes uh, session in which she will uh, share her experience of preparing for this exam. Thereafter, she will hold a question and answer session where you can raise your questions and she will answer your questions. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is quite intimidating. <laughs> I was sitting here a few years ago and listening to some of the topper talks. So I'm glad to be on the other side. <laughs> I know how it is uh, preparing and struggling. Uh, so, you may have like listened to a lot of uh, top strategies and what to do and stuff. So, to keep it slightly different, uh, we'll talk about what not to do. Uh, because you must have heard, it, this is my fifth attempt. That means I failed uh, four times earlier. So, I could be of use to you by saying about all the mistakes that I did, so that you may not uh, uh, do those mistakes and you can make the best use of the little time that you have. I just noted down all the mistakes I did <laughs> over the past four years so that I can be crisp and quick. I just have like six or seven broad points uh, that we can discuss. The first thing is uh, do not read too much. Uh, we might be thinking that we need to read a lot of lot of things. So, wherever possible, cut down on the trash, what is not needed. So, all of us read the basic books that we read for every subject. So, keep that uh, limited and uh, keep revising that multiple times. Uh, just don't run around content. Uh, take it from me, content and knowledge base is not what determines your rank in this exam. It's your innovation, it's your creativity, it's your ability to take risks both in your preparation and in the exam. So, until you understand that, you will be chasing behind the content, this notes, that notes, you know, let me write a little bit more, this value addition, that value addition. Yes, they are all important, but they are only like 30% of the marks they are going to fetch you. The 70% is you, just the distinct you. So, focus on that. How can I stand out? So, right from the day one, keep this in mind. How can I stand out from others? Because at the end of the day, the examiner in the mains is going to check so many papers. So, keep that. Like, never forget that. And uh, yeah, like, do not read too much. Never read too much. And how do you know that uh, you're reading too much? Like, every single line or a paragraph you read, you should be like, uh, where can I use this? How many marks would I get if I read this and use that somewhere? That ruthless you have to be. Like you're not here to do PhD or anything. You don't, you don't have to care if you have completely understood the subject. You have to understood as much so that you can go and write a decent answer and present it well. So please don't read too much. I read too much, a lot. That's not useful. That never got me anywhere. So read how much ever is needed. How do you know? Uh, focus on syllabus, previous year's questions. So what uh, I developed a thumb rule over the years. For any syllabus topic in uh, either optional or general studies, I would have one A4 size sheet. And that's my notes for that. And I would organize this notes also in very crisp points as to what is this subject. Uh, what does it explain? Like very brief points. And why is it relevant? How can I apply this elsewhere? 
if there's a question on this uh, topic what should my introductions and conclusions be so for every syllabus topic in gs and uh, optional i had introductions and conclusions ready so if you tell me uh, like any topic let's say separation of powers or anything so i already have conclusions and introductions ready so no matter what they ask on that my introduction and conclusion are the same the body will curate it as per the demand of the question so this is a this helps you cut down on the time so make a uh, excel sheet or whatever for all the syllabus topics and have your introductions and conclusions ready you should not be searching here and there it's very easy to think of introductions and conclusions so the first rule is uh, do not read too much the second thing is the current affairs i'm sure most of you might be finding it difficult as to how to manage this current affair current affairs which at a point will feel like an end in itself so i was there when i was trying to read monthlies and then revise them underline them and then put them in the cupboard and then take it out again while re revise them make notes out of them what not but uh, uh, see please understand the current affairs is only like 30% of the mains maximum i would say 30% from my assessment of at least past few years so like do not give 70% of your time to that and this is the first thing so understand how much current affairs is important 70% is still your static where you need to have command so so that's the first point and the second point with current affairs is don't read everything every you know damn thing happening in the world if you look at upsc previous papers be it in the prelims or in the mains upsc never asks obscure stuff they always ask things that we see around us but somehow uh, we miss them because we are busy reading the monthlies or some other random things so uh, try to understand what are the kinds of things that upsc asks for uh, current affairs and make a list of those things so after uh, two attempts i understood this like there's nothing coming out of uh, chasing the monthlies or like you know current affairs current affairs compilations or whatever so for every paper i made like a list of 30 or 35 most probable ca topics that could be asked in the mains exam so this was uh, what i fixed like i'm not going to read more than 30 ca topics for let's say gs1 or gs2 gs3 and if i were to add another topic to that list then i should just to remove one uh, topic so i i cut down on the amount of current affairs i was doing and for these current affairs what it did was i made very short notes so i used many sources to make that short note for this for those current affairs but the thing is it's just those 30 that i selected which i felt are very likely to be asked in the exam and both in my uh, mains as well as interview most of the questions related to current affairs came from this and secondly when you do what when you do this what happens is you have very few topics to prepare and you'll revise them extensively again and again because they're very few to begin with and since they are on your memory like all the time you can also use them as examples or you know you can extract the best out of them for one paper you study like 30 35 current affair topics and then you decide to use them in essay everywhere in other papers wherever you can you know like incorporate them so my idea here is read few current affairs but the but like very important ones how do you know which are very important if you care to read the newspaper every day just go through the newspaper you see like you know some things are like they keep happening they keep happening and you anyway have your uh, previous year's questions on your table syllabus on the table so you can relate okay g20 is an important topic this could be asked in multiple papers in multiple dimensions so let me just brainstorm like uh, what all should i prepare for g20 what is g20 and uh, uh, why is why is india's presidency so relevant these are the questions that that should you know prop up in your mind when you are preparing or making note on any current affairs topics like be very deliberate active not passive don't just open a current affairs compilation and keep reading so look at the topic okay g20 is an important topic uh, so let me ask myself uh, five or six questions on this what is g20 like why is this relevant why is india's presidency relevant what how can india use this to further its uh, you know image and uh, whatever goals it has and uh, international relations connected to what is happening like center state because if we see g20 most of the meetings are happening in 
uh, different states of the uh, India, which also shows, you know, this is this the idea that G20 meetings are happening here. I can also use it in a federalism topic. So if you're very conscious, you will use whatever little information you have in multiple ways. And this is where creativity and your innovation comes up. And this is what makes you stand out. Not the fact that you have read and uh, extensively revised some monthly uh, compilations. So, so try to uh, be very uh, deliberate, active and smart with current affairs. Don't read too much. Just read only the most important topics and then write uh, only that. And maybe, uh, yeah, and the next thing is since you are in the initial stages, I assume, because you are here taking coaching. Uh, please do not neglect the practice part. Uh, I can understand that you you are just making your notes and everything, but uh, when the when you close to the exam, the exam is approaching. Focus on practice. See, this is a competitive exam at the end of the day, and in a competitive exam, what matters is how efficiently you are able to perform on that day. So you should practice to such an extent that that you are in autopilot mode on the day of the exam. Like your mind does not need stimulation or anything to, uh, you know, let the answers come out. So you should practice to that extent. So for practice, we have two things, prelims and mains. So uh, for prelims, what I used to do is, I used to pick any two test series and uh, I used to go subject wise first and then full length. So this is what worked for me and I feel is like foolproof. But uh, uh, what is also important with prelims test series is you may take a test like you some people take like hundreds of tests. But that's not but what is more important is are you revising those tests. So every test that I did for prelims, I made sure that I was revising it at least two or three times before going to the final exam. So let's say today morning I uh, sit and take a prelims test. I take the test for two hours like the actual test it is and I will analyze it and I will go through it which takes another two, two and a half hours easily. So my four, four and a half hours is gone for this work. So this I do it in the morning session. And now, so my first revision of this test is done. And then I will mark the day for next revision which is one week from today. So again one week from today I will open that paper. And I'll just go through it, okay, okay. I'll just keep revising whatever is there in the paper. And I'll put it back. And then again, one week from then, this is the third time I'm picking up my paper. I'll pick up that paper and I'll once again go through it. And now, they, there could still be things that I don't remember, I don't get or I feel like are very important and I need to revise just before going to the exam. So I take a sheet of paper and I, I call this my error list. So I write in that, like whatever small points. And then I throw away that booklet, uh, test paper. So this, this may feel like a very laborious thing, but if you have everything in an Excel sheet, it's very easy. Like uh, this won't even take like more than two months or two and a half months to do this process. And I do not think about prelims in the rest of the year. It's only like two, two and a half months before the prelims exam that I think about it. So you have like two test series. If you're comfortable with one, then do one. But the idea is like every paper you do, you have to revise it like again and again. So put, put all of that in an Excel sheet and have your schedules ready. So if you have done, if you have taken a test, you should know when is its first revision, when is its second revision and third revision and you're done. So it, it may feel like a lot, but it's very interesting to do it this way. And there is like scientific evidence which shows that if you recall things that you read or revise things you read at, in, uh, at regular intervals, regular spaced intervals, you're more likely to retain it rather than, you know, you let it uh, flow away. And so that's the prelims and mains, again, mains also just try to take more tests, be open to criticism. Uh, don't be, I've seen like a lot of people and including myself initially, I was very afraid to attempt mains answers, thinking that I need a lot of knowledge or, uh, you know, I need a lot of content or that I'm not ready to write. See, they're general studies and don't be intimidated by the question. The question can be anything. You interpret it as how you understand it with your, you know, sense of rationality and you attempt it. Just uh, focus on 
how to uh, whatever you know this should be your mantra all the time whatever little you know how can you extract the maximum out of it so you, that applies for mains answers as well so you take some whatever your knowledge you have and you try to extract the best you present it in a better way uh, you like like i said before your introductions and conclusions should be beforehand like prepared beforehand there is no like uh, question here you cannot sit in the exam and think okay what introduction can i write it's just easy if you have it beforehand and you know the questions come from the syllabus so it's very easy to uh, make introductions and conclusions it's just that nobody gives it so much thought so do that and it worked from it this time uh yeah so main answers just try to see how can you present it better and uh, uh, go through the topper copies and see what is it all of them have done in common so when i looked at like 10 papers or so i noticed that they do not have much content there is the knowledge base is not very you know deep or wide but what they are doing is they are opening up the topic so whatever be it even when they give like 5g they will connect it to something to do with culture you know how this can be used to revive uh, maybe some traditional crafts or arts or whatever the idea is learn to open up the dimensions until you stop like until you stop chasing the content or knowledge base you cannot uh, you know develop this ability to open up the topic you know just think about it. we are all graduates and we have common sense we went to school and we studied and this much is enough to think but the thing is we are so bogged down by everything and so much content so much information so much chaos that we forget to think in the middle of all of this so have that have that trust in yourself that what that you can think you can open up the uh, topic and you can write by opening it up so just believe in yourself and be very smart and no no content heavy just be innovation heavy okay that is the third part uh all right and the fourth part is i hope you all clear in the first attempt no doubt there but for some of you you may not be able to you know clear do not uh, give up like do uh, what happens is i'll play out two scenarios uh, the first thing is you give like one attempt to two attempt uh, two attempts and then you give up you know like just let me go away because this is not happening so the other part is even dangerous so you remain in the cycle you keep writing again and again but you become complacent so you think uh, that you already know you know if there's any topic talking or i already know everything what will i go and listen i know how to write i know how to do so don't become complacent just try to keep improving and improving it it can get difficult like from my experience itself sustaining yourself for that long can be difficult but the only thing that makes the whole process interesting is uh, keep learning uh, like you know try for you know what can i do better you know how what are the toppers have what did the toppers do this year you know that seems to have fetched them marks always be on the uh, you know active mode never be on the passive mode and you should always try to be like how can i extract more marks okay this time i got so many x number of marks i failed what can i do to get more marks so this should be your uh, like way and do not like normalize failures it's okay to fail one or two. i'm not saying that you should fail but i'm just saying that if you fail it's fine it's not it's an exam at the end of the day don't make it like a larger than life picture it's an exam it's a government exam that you are appearing for you clear you do not clear upsc has given you attempts uh, so but try to learn from the mistakes that you are making just tell yourself that i will never make a mistake second time there was a essay in 2022 you know you never step in the river same river twice or something it's the same thing like you don't make the same mistake again tell yourself that whether it's prelims whether it's mains whether it's overall strategy you're not going to make the same mistake again so that way like you'll cut down on the mistakes and you'll learn from them and you will quickly move ahead so do not be uh, you know don't stigmatize setbacks or failures it's okay to fail like completely all right just learn from there failure teaches a lot well you know success tends to get to your head but i feel failure teaches you just learn okay and uh, maybe some other general things like uh, since Uh, you must be in delhi because you're taking here 
coaching here so do not ignore your uh, uh, mental health and physical health the process you know th this can be a very sedentary preparation process and i strongly believe that mind and body are connected so if you are not in you know good physical health your mind will get impacted as well and also your mental health also see always keep telling yourself like it took me couple of years to tell myself that it's only an exam that it's it's not my life and that not clearing this exam or clearing this exam is not going to determine who i am so please keep telling yourself that that's important to keep your uh, mental hygiene and not take everything so personally or not to you know get scared get afraid if your friend is studying too much or things like that so keep telling yourself that and please be aware of your uh, how your mental health is uh, so that you know the whole preparation should be joyful it should not be like too too stressful and burdenful so focus on that as well please don't uh, ignore your physical and uh, mental health they are equally important i learned the hard way since i'm here i'm telling you just focus on them they will in fact determine the uh, confidence with which you are writing your answers or the way you are presenting yourself in the interview or personality test stage so use the uh, journey to become a better person like develop your personality as well and uh, another thing uh, social media like i get asked a lot like how to do it uh, well like th there is a school of thought which says that you can manage both you can have all the engagements in social media possible and also balance your preparation but i don't think that's possible uh, in the preparation phase because i've come out i've been in that i can tell you it's it makes you very insecure and vulnerable i was very underconfident because i was failing again and again and again you can be insecure you know you can be questioning yourself on a daily basis as to what am i doing wrong uh, or you know is this the right career choice so my point is yes these are all the all of these happen on a daily basis not like you know occasionally once in six months or so so we are very vulnerable and social media tends to play on these vulnerabilities so you see others uh, progressing in their chosen fields you only see the progress not the struggle behind so you assume they are progressing i am not or for the simple reason that it could be you know we could be scrolling mindlessly and stuff so if possible just stay away from social media and focus on it and develop a, a you know healthy peer group so that you can do and talking about peer group like uh, finding do not isolate yourself this is not what you should do like do not isolate yourself but find a healthy peer group uh, being in ORN i can understand how difficult it is to find a healthy peer group but if you once find your right peer group it's only a matter of time uh, till you clear the exam so i was lucky to find a peer group so just put some effort there see who uh, do you match your frequency with see who is preparing smartly and so find a peer group i found my peer group in or in itself which you know built over the years but i found my basic uh, first peer group for this exam in you know, or in itself and we all cleared the exam uh so just find a very healthy peer group and study together it shares the burden of making notes or whatever uh, so have a peer group so uh, that's it from my side broadly i'm sure you must have like heard a lot on uh, strategies and what to do and what not to do uh, but i would say to sum it up please own up the process everything should be your own uh, own up your failures own up your setbacks own up your strategy be very active deliberate and ruthless okay you need marks nothing more nothing less do not read anything that won't fetch you marks okay do not it's not important if you have understood the, the topic to the point that you can write a thesis paper no you have to write a 250 word answer so always be on the chase for marks you know how can i get more marks if i'm reading a paragraph if i'm reading an article do not just read the newspaper you know essay uh try to see okay if i'm reading this where will this be useful to me 
so if if this is not useful then i won't bother reading it i don't care like you know if everybody is reading monthly magazines that doesn't mean i will read okay let me open the monthly magazine there i find these are like four or five topics that are important from this month maybe i'll go through them and make my own note so be very ruthless you only care for marks and nothing else and you should always be if if you actually have this approach you will could understand over time how to uh work for marks rather than content but the problem is we are always running behind the wrong things you know more content better content or you know uh, consolidated content things like that things that do not matter what matters is like your chase for marks and just keep thinking how can you do that and like be very ruthless So that's it from my side so if you want to ask me any specific questions then sure Oh right okay uh, so my <laughs> optional earlier was uh, geography but somehow i could not uh, score much with geography so so let me tell you about my journey briefly so that you'll have a context so first three attempts i wrote with geography and i kept clearing mains uh, prelims even in the first attempt i cleared pre and in hindsight that was the worst thing that could have happened to me because i got stuck in that cycle so i uh, wrote my prelims and then i went ahead and wrote my mains with zero understanding nothing and i naturally did not clear and the next year i did the same things again with more intensity so i failed with greater intensity in the second attempt so this time okay it took me like two attempts to question myself okay something is going wrong here like i can't be so dumb <laughs> something i'm missing out so i started uh, evaluating myself a little bit and then i changed how i was writing and uh, how i was studying basically so i i uh, like threw away all the extra trash that i was having and i stuck to whatever i talked about earlier just notes on the syllabus topics and the current affairs that i felt were important so these i did and i cleared mains in the third attempt with this strategy but uh, somehow my option was pulling me back i had like, less marks on the option and uh, i did not clear the third attempt after interview so i thought okay let me go and appear for prelims again but i failed prelims in the fourth time so it was like a really really like it was the lowest of the low i could hit uh, as a both as a academic wise and even otherwise for my health uh so but then i try to look at the positive side if i can just do something out of this and this is when it like struck me look this is the right time to change optional uh everybody was against it so the whole argument was you spent already so many years like why do you want to shift but it was not working out for me so there was a major risk uh, that i took the decision that i had to take it was a difficult decision but at the end of the day i went ahead and thought okay if this is not working for me let me just change it i don't care how many years i put in all i care is i have to clear this exam i need more marks in the optional so i shifted to anthropology and uh, uh, and for anthropology i prepared by myself i just stuck to again thumb rule one sheet of paper for every syllabus topic i never cared whether it this topic was from general studies or optional any topic from the paper if i cannot consolidate into a one sheet of paper that means i have not read it in the right way so i'll read it again but i'll make sure at the end of the day i'll come and summarize it in one sheet of paper and for this also again even for anthropology i had every single syllabus topic i had the introduction ready conclusion ready and these were all like nice a bit catchy introductions and catchy conclusions they are not difficult to make it you if you give some thought to it you will definitely be able to do that and uh, i prepared the notes very crisp notes and even while preparing the notes for anthropology i kept like i kept thinking from the perspective of an answer rather than understanding and you know uh, summarizing a topic okay if this question to come in were to come in the uh, exam how can i uh, write it better how can i stand out so i incorporated a lot of uh, flow charts diagrams even in anthropology paper so this way i just stuck to the syllabus and i practiced a lot of previous years questions in fact i used to write the whole length paper of previous years 
so that i did and the practice also helped helped a lot like i wrote quite a few tests uh, tests mock tests for anthropology as you have told that it's your fifth attempt so uh, how do you handle the just like everyone is uh, asking that how's your preparation so how would you handle the society and the relatives and the people used to ask that uh, how's your preparation going on right <laughs> Firstly, like I am fortunate that I had a very supportive system. Somehow, my parents shielded all of that from me, so that they don't get to me. But the second thing is, you have to come manage yourself first. Be okay with uh, uh, failing and having setbacks. Otherwise, you won't be able to give an answer to others. Like I'll give you an example. Uh, in my personality test, the first question the board chairman asked me was, "What are you doing for the past five years?" so i could have that question could have made me insecure you know if i let it so i simply told her ma'am i was making mistakes and learning from those mistakes so if that it took me that's why it took me a long and she was okay with that answer and i was just being so the idea is you you convince yourself it's okay what what if you you know don't clear it in the first attempt or what's going you have the time you have the age you have the energy so that and the second thing is uh, don't become complacent so keep uh, trying to search for you know how can you learn from your mistakes and uh, uh, how can i improve and also to make things like interesting uh, try, try to pursue your hobbies so i always like to learn new things so i enrolled myself in a badminton class sometimes in a karate class something anything that uh, you know keeps the process and also plan plan well and have monthly targets weekly targets i plan a lot uh, so i had all sorts of tar targets so every day when i achieved my target it was like a you know pat on my back so okay i did this part so with all of these things you will learn to manage but the most important thing is you have to have to understand you know it's my journey you know i don't have to emulate anybody else i'll do it my way it's my process even if i don't clear the exam i'll be a better person to face the world so own up the process and tell yourself it's okay i'll do it my way nothing is going uh, ma'am when we prepare the like when we attempt the previous year papers so there will be the dynamic part so but when we prepare for the upcoming examination our current affairs base is basically 1.5 to 2 years before the paper so ma'am how do we attempt those questions that is 5 years ago okay uh, so try to attempt to them with whatever little knowledge you have but after uh, attempting that you will obviously look at the answer and try to know what is there in it right and make a short, small note of it like write it in in a book or something and now see upsc considers that particular current event of the time as important now see if you can use it anywhere else so that way so if something is very very like you know dynamic current affair thing that's no longer relevant now then just let it go so others you can try to that's what i'm saying like you should practice to a point that irrespective of what is asked you are able to write a, a decent answer which addresses the demand of the question that requires a lot of practice and don't run away from practice your first 100 questions or so that you write may not be like you know they may be very bad but so what the one not one question will get better and you'll only get get better from them so don't like be afraid of practicing those 100 questions just even if you do not know that think try to try to write with whatever you know that's a skill like you have to learn slowly slowly so uh, we see that uh, prelims is becoming more and more unpredictable so uh, how to go through it? i mean how to overcome that uh, i just wanted to know your strategy okay uh, so there are like two parts to this first is doing your basics properly we all know the basic books right like lakshmikanth for polity we have a uh, uh, ncrt bipin chandra for history i i used to do only that bipin chandra part for uh, history the ncrt and spectrum ke end mein they have some pages like summary kind of thing i tore those pages from spectrum and i just did that after after that so we all have the basic books and uh, you have studied those books and you have made short note or whatever note the basics are done 
and that's fine. Now th uh, the second part is like how do you uh, uh, incorporate the things that you do not know or you know the random like the randomest questions that they are throwing at us in the prelims. How do you tackle with that and this is where practice comes into picture. It is by practicing a lot of lot of exams that you learn how to deal with them. Like trust me, nobody has to come and tell you what elimination technique you have to use or how many you should attempt. Over the process of 60 or 70 mock tests that you write, you will learn this. So in the you will see a, a like drastic change in performance. So what I used to do is I used to give like uh, five or six days for first history. Let's say I'm starting with modern history. Uh, whichever two test series that I pick up, I take modern history questions. So they generally each test series has 35 questions, if I'm not 35 papers. So modern history gets like two or three uh, sectional tests. So I take uh, two or three sectional tests from test series one, and uh, again two sectional tests from test series two. So I have five tests. I have six days to finish my modern history. So in the morning sessions, I would do the uh, papers, solve the papers. In the afternoon session, I will revise my uh, whatever basics that I've done. So this is what I used to do for every, uh, every subject. Once I'm done with subjects, I will start with full length tests. Each test series gives me 10 full length tests. So I have like 20 full length tests. So once I'm done with all the sectional tests, now I'll start with the full length tests and the next 20 days it will be full length test and I'm also like I, like I told you before these tests have should also be revised so you should have a whole schedule planned as to what you're doing uh, so this way you can manage but the key is to like uh, when I didn't clear prelims in my fourth attempt it was actually my CSAT that stopped me not the GS uh, one so I cleared prelims in all the five times that I've taken the test and this is the key is practice like practice and like don't be afraid of what you do not know learn from the test series like whatever solution that they provide piche so pick up points from there and you know make a note of it in fact uh, when i was waiting for this result i was solving mock tests uh, until the day before because that that waiting period is it drives you insane and the only sane thing that you can do is just put yourself in a book or something. Anyway, so I was doing Vajiram ka mock test and there was this question, there was this question this year, no? Uh, who had given DU, Daman and Diyuka DU to some Portuguese or something? And uh, I think the answer is Bahadur Shah. So this question, I did, got it from like a test series only. And I got it wrong in the test series because I thought Bahadur Shah was like a Mughal emperor and they're talking about emperor here. Like, okay, this is like, this cannot be the answer. But then when I checked my key back then, so I thought, okay, this is Bahadur Shah. And I had written down in my error list, okay, this, this fact happened and the same question came in. So it doesn't matter what test series you're doing. So there are a lot of new things you can learn from the test series. Don't be like, oh, this test series has all new things. Uh, I did not read any of this. Let me go back and read and then come back and do test series. It's okay if you do not know. If It's okay if you know just 30 or 40, but make sure once you've analyzed the test, you have like gone through all the new stuff and you'll revise, revise, and then you'll pick up the new points. So you can go about like this. Myself, I'm not a mathematics person, purely humanities student. So what could be the strategy to tackle CSAT? I think CSAT is becoming tricky even for those from technical background. I graduated from an IIT and yet I could not <laughs> clear CSAT in the fourth attempt. So everybody like don't take CSAT for light. And I think CSAT, uh, see just don't stick to I will answer only math questions or I will answer only English questions or I will answer only logical reason. Try to put your hand in all the three types of questions. And pick the easy, easiest questions. You only have to get like the qualifying marks. So pick those. And second thing, there are always certain types of questions coming in. Clock problems, averages, or uh, cube problems, some permutations and combinations, arrangement problems. You go through the test papers. Like you take last five years ka CSAT papers and analyze what kind of questions are coming. You will find there are almost 10 or 11 types of questions that keep coming up. And now that you have sorted out what are these uh, types of questions, go find out how to solve them 
in the in very less amount of times there are always formula shortcuts or whatever just go and search on the youtube but now you would have known how to solve those 10 types of questions with in you know within a matter of few minutes so with that you can manage uh, with this you can manage to you know get the qualifying score okay so the mistake I did with the, the classes was I did not relate what was being taught in the class to the syllabus or the previous year's question. So whatever you study in the class, uh, your focus should be, you should be very clear, okay, this, is, I'm what I'm studying today belongs to this syllabus topic. And in this syllabus topic, so and so previous questions have been asked. So the, once the teacher is done with the, that topic, am I able to understand this topic, you know, if, in decent way and am I able to answer those previous questions. So if you're this conscious about what is being taught in the class and not treat like class notes as an end in itself, the end is the actual exam and the only uh, guiding lights that we have are previous year's questions and syllabus papers. So whatever is being taught in the class, you relate to that and I did not do that. I used to just read class notes as an end in itself, which, which is the worst thing that you can do. Okay, so any coaching institutes, on, they help you only to the extent of 20 to 30 percent. The rest has to come from you. Uh, you know, that's, that, distinct, that is what makes you stand out in the actual exam. You don't have to write each and everything the sir is saying. Uh, once you're clear, okay, that is why you should understand how to make notes in general. So if you're making notes on any topic, uh, like any uh, topic from any general studies or uh, uh, your option subject, you should have some pointers on which you make notes. Like, uh, you know, what is this topic about? Why is this important? Everything should be in like crisp bullet points. And how is this relevant? So if you have such pro pointers beforehand, so whenever the teacher is talking something relevant to those pointers, you will note it down. The rest you don't have to note down. Right. So be very conscious of how to make notes in the first place like what are the areas that you should what kind of points you should be writing down the some of the thing, some of the important things are like the dimensions if you see a teacher teaching something and then linking it to some other paper or some other thing note that down because that's important the more you open up a topic the more marks you'll get and application part so uh, let's say uh, there's a class going on on quantum computing or artificial intelligence. So if you look at the previous year's questions, so they ask the application part on this, particularly on agriculture and health. These two areas, the application they've asked. Even otherwise, application in any other area is also important. So if that is being taught, they may teach you like a lot of things, but you understand the topic, like, you know, very briefly, what is this about? You know, if there's a question on, uh, AI or quantum computing, can I just put, uh, after writing the introduction, can I put in a box some, you know, information. Like with AI, you can say different things within AI, like a flowchart sort of thing. These are all general components of AI, machine learning or whatever. I put it in a box and then I go to the demand of the question. And here when the sir is teaching, you can think about, okay, health, just health, so and so, uh, agriculture, so and so, disaster management, so and so. Uh, you know, social issues, so and so, like gender uh, empowerment or things like that. So know what is important, know how notes should be made so that you can only pick up those points from the lectures. You don't have to like write everything that they're saying. What you feel is important, note that down and the rest just listen. That's it. Ma'am, actually I'm facing a lot of problem while doing the current affairs. A lot of time is getting devoted sometimes five hours too. So I just want to know, okay, how did you do it? What were your sources? How did you manage time? Did you read the monthly compilations? And how did you integrate it with them? Like, did you make notes on the daily basis? GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4, how did you bifurcate them? Okay. So uh, first thing, I regularly read a newspaper. Like I never, never stopped reading the newspaper. The first thing I do after waking up is, uh, read newspaper over tea and it's like a habit and so that and secondly I used to read monthlies in the beginning but I realized the the, the amount of time like you said I was putting into it and the benefit I was getting was simply not logical so I stopped reading that instead what I did was uh, 
like every day i used to read newspaper if if a topic is getting repeated again and again and again and i feel that's important i used to make a note of that topic not even like things picking up from that so i used to have a current affairs book so in that uh, i just let's say if the g20 topic is coming again and again and again uh, i used to write g20 as a important topic there so throughout the month i used to just write down the topics and uh, whenever i get time i used to make notes on those and again just one sheet of notes on those topics and while making this topic i used to ref- not notes i used to refer to multiple sources whether it's monthlies or youtube video or some other source but the thing is i used to look at all of that and pick up just what is needed to me you know what is this topic why is it important i used to ask these questions these questions are very important that is what makes the preparation active and not passive so you ask like what questions i can ask a, a common person g20 i am a common person what are the doubts that should come to be like why is the government making such a big deal out of it you know why is it so such a big deal internationally these are some common sensical questions that upsc tends to ask in the mains exam so you ask those questions first hand and write uh, try to like collect chota chota points and then like have a note of that so by for one month i used to have barely like barely 10 or 15 topics like maximum okay but like never never more than that and uh, again when i'm uh, reading for mains i used to sort them like you know where are these more relevant so i used to just write next to the topic index me i used to write okay this is more relevant for gs2 gs3 gst so that when i'm uh, studying paper wise for the mains i'll have all the uh, relevant current affairs for that paper in the at a place but this is the process i followed this helped me like cut down uh, a lot of time that i was spending on current affairs and i was focusing only on the most important things and since the topics were so few like m- one month you won't find more than 10 important topics 10 or 15 and i used to revise them a lot again and again and again and again and i used to use them in so many places like in essay or in ethics or anywhere so i was never in dearth of uh, uh, examples or value addition points because i had this current affair uh, things which which i was revising again and again but what happens with monthly is you have almost like 100 topics there how will you ha- have them on your fingertips it's not possible so that's why be very deliberate just do whatever is important that's it and the second thing that i did with current affairs was i had a uh, google uh, doc so i put all the syllabus topic there so i had one document each for gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 uh, i had all the syllabus topics in that doc one below each like all the topics and whenever i found something very interesting or uh, something that i thought you know i can die if if a question comes on this topic from the exam i am going to mention this no matter how they frame the questions i will find a way to incorporate this so those points i used to write in that doc these are like high high value addition points and uh, i i used to just summarize it in like one or two lines that's it in in that document so in the on the when i was like revising finally after prelims for the mains i only had these things to revise the current affairs book that i had and the value addition book that i had the introductions and conclusions book that i had for all the topics so these things uh, i used uh right so environment is largely dynamic like it's current affair oriented so i picked i made a list of what are the most important environment topics so climate change or whatever like I, we keep reading it right so some of the key legislations are always important they can there can always be a question on biodiversity act or environmental protection act so these i made a list of the topics both from current affairs and from the general understanding that what should a common person preparing for you know a general study should should have command on there are hardly 15 to 20 topics such topics and again i prepared my notes on it the idea is that like you have to pick up what you think are important for this exam and how will you know if you look at the syllabus and previous years questions if you look at these two things you will get an idea of okay these are the areas that i have that i should have my notes on so i'll just make notes on these areas and i'll keep revising them 
so i picked up such topics and made notes and revised just that ma'am what is the basis for demarcating the boundary while writing the gs and optional answer ma'am being as a geography optional student uh, after writing a good amount of answers it is difficult to demarcate a boundary while i am writing the gs answers in geography sections what to pick what to not pick in gs and what and what to include in optional so it is very difficult ma'am so that's why i want to uh, ask this point right maybe i am not the right person to ask i could not do that and hence i had to you know change the option but from the understanding i had from anthropology i can answer uh, so in uh, optional try to make it more uh, scholarly or like more you know uh, not general it shouldn't feel generic so for my subject anthropology i used to quote a lot of scholars i used to uh, write a lot of tribal examples or case studies these things i used to do like these are the only things uh, and i can understand geography is one such subject which tends to be slightly like general studies but you know find your way to distinguish but it's very important to distinguish do not write gs answers in geography it won't fetch you marks so maybe like look at uh, you know notes uh, answer sheets of topics who cleared with geography and maybe you'll get a better idea there yes ma'am um, uh, just i just need to ask that uh, how to make sure that what we are learning the concept the facts the uh, and even though dynamic part it remains with us uh, to the free like how to recheck that uh, we are aware of this uh, topic or we know the information about this can we keep it keep it in our mind right right correct so this happen this is difficult to do when you are reading too much and too many topics but when you cut it down so for let me say for example the current affairs that i was doing i only had very few topics to begin with and i used to make sure i'm revising like three at least three times it's called spaced repetition method just the idea is you have to like uh, revise it multiple times and not let it go away from your mind so keep the number of topics limited and revise those limited topics again and again and again like how many at least the thumb rule is three times anything you make read and make a note of if you can revise it three times then you will reproduce it in the exam but you can do that when your sources and notes is small no if it's like too wide it's humanly impossible to do it so keep it short cut cut down on the th uh, trash if you feel this is useless just throw it away you know don't just because everybody else is doing you don't have to do it ma'am as you mentioned that you had geography in the first four attempts so if i could ask what was the reason behind choosing geography there was i actually did not put much thought into selecting the optional and that was the mistake that i made earlier i just looked at the syllabus there were like mountains volcanoes and stuff and i thought you know must be easy I did not look at the length of the syllabus or you know the human geography part or anything. I so if I had done that maybe I would not have like selected. It didn't suit my aptitude. I'm sure like a lot of people do clear with geography. It's just that I could not uh, differentiate it from general studies like somebody was saying. So my answers were all very general studies oriented. In a, in this subject that I chose later anthropology the subject itself is not generic so it, the risk of being generic reduces to a large extent hello ma'am congratulations first thank of all you. and thank you for sharing your journey with us i just wanted to ask about the approach for uh, qualifying uh, language papers uh, how much to invest when to invest and uh, what exactly will be the approach so if them? if the language is your mother tongue then it should not be a problem right so maybe if you are uh, slightly not uh, secure about it just do one or two papers before that should be fine and english is like if you again find it difficult just pick up one or two previous years papers and see uh, because it's a qualifying paper no there are some sections where you can easily get marks so focus on those sections and this no need to put a lot of uh, time and effort just look at one or two papers beforehand thank you ma'am first of all very very congratulations on your success thank you so my question is how to stay motivated because at one point of time you feel low on in so how to stay motivated uh there like there is no one single formula for it but uh, i'll tell you about things that helped me uh, first is my aggressive planning 
like I plan everything. Uh, so if you ask me what I'm going to do on let's say August 23rd, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now itself, approximately. So this kind of planning uh, like help me not to get overwhelmed. When do you become demotivated? When you think, oh my God, this is so much that I cannot manage. Like what, how will I go ahead? Once you feel overwhelmed, you want to just push the books away and like open any web series or anything. <laughs> right, that's what happens to most of us. So the thing is, we should not get overwhelmed. How do you not get overwhelmed? By planning everything out. So the syllabus can be as huge as it can get. What matters to me today is this I finish this much. That's it. And my job is done. What matters for this week is I finish this much. Because I know if I keep at it at this plan, I will finish everything in four months. So that is very important. That's why have the plan mapped in front of you. It should be like visible to you every day. That keeps telling you that all I have to do for this today is just this much. And I'm, I'm good to go. First thing. And the uh, second thing is peer group, like a good peer group. When you see your peers studying and you, know, you Netflix and chilling, that won't sit well. You will automatically, uh, it gives a sense of uh, accountability. So use that from a peer group. And the third thing is, uh, like have a sense of balance. Don't like study for 10, 12, 13 hours, just seven to eight hours of quality study is enough and have other healthy hobbies if you have, you know, whatever hobbies you have, practice that. I used to play badminton, I used to do yoga, like whatever, whatever feels right for you, healthy, productive things, just do them and have a sense of balance in life. So these three things, they will get you through to some extent. Ma'am, now how to prepare for personality test? Uh, personal. Okay, so personality test is uh, uh, earlier I thought it was mains exam in a different format. So mains may you go and write, personality tells me the same thing you go and speak. It couldn't be like farther from truth. So personality test is a test of personality, not your knowledge. So the syllabus clearly mentions what kind of traits are they looking for you. So please open the syllabus and read those traits and internalize them. And uh, so what I did was I had like five small thumb rules as to what should I do. So I decided when I go in the interview on the panel, I'll be confident, I'll be brutally honest, everything I'll own up my failures or whatever. I'll be balanced, whatever question they throw at me, however controversial, I will give a balanced opinion and I will be humble. You know, I'm willing to change, I'm willing to improve. So these five, and I'll be cheerful. It should not be like a serious question and answer format. It should be an engaging conversation. These five things, in fact, I had written on my fingers, five fingers, and I said, I'll just do this. So whatever question they were asking me, I looked at them from the lens of these, like how can I make sure all these values are communicating through? I did not care for one second as to if I was giving the best solution to the Ukraine conflict. So they asked me if uh, uh, the ICC warrant on uh, uh, Mr. Putin will be of any use. I said uh, it won't be of much use because uh, Russia is not a member to ICC statute, but uh, it can uh, uh, create a sense of diplomatic or global pressure on the Russia. So, you know, it's one of the things that we have in our hands. So we can use it. That's why the world is using it. So a sense of like, I did not try to give a very, you know, polished answer. I was, I just said what I felt could be the thing. So five thumb rules that I kept for myself and I made sure in every answer I was communicating this. It did not come immediately. I practiced in whenever I was giving any mock interview, I was doing this. I was trying to, so I slowly developed. Many times something in my mind, uh, plan B, it also happened to you. Yes, I entered. So when I graduated from, I graduated from IIT Hyderabad and so I thought, okay, my solution to my career problems is going to Delhi. And I thought, okay, one year in Delhi, I'll be an IS. So that's how I entered. I had no plan B. Uh, so it's fine not to have a plan B if you have a supporting ecosystem, like at home, if everybody is willing to support your journey, but it, you can also have plan B. Because despite your sincere and uh, uh, sincere efforts, you may not uh, clear the exam because the competition is such and the exam is such. So fine, it's just an exam. Yeah? And your graduation is your plan B. You know, if not this, I would have been a civil engineer maybe. 
so you can have you cannot have some, for some people not having plan b gives them that motivation it gave me anxiety <laughs> so it's up to you what you want to take ma'am excuse yes, me ma'am yes ma'am i have two questions the first is ma'am when you wrote the notes did you wrote in the first reading of the book or um you read the book so many times and after that you make the notes and the second question is ma'am ma'am after the coaching did you stayed in delhi or you went back to the home uh to answer your second question i went home like immediately i could not adjust to the food and the climate here so and the cost of living so i went back and to the first question see we, uh, we you don't have to read a book again and again and make notes so instant when you're making let's say you make uh, there is this book bipin chandra's uh, history book 11th or 12th class in crt i think it has 13 or 14 chapters each chapter is pretty long so what you what i used to do is i used to read a chapter and make a note of it but the chapter is so huge it's difficult to uh, you know condense it into one sheet of paper so i used to read the chapter again so so i would read to the point when i'm ready to condense it and write otherwise i have not understood it like from this the, from the point of this exam so i never read a book again and again like never i always made note from it and i read the notes again and again so develop that ability to uh, properly understand a topic and write notes so read the same chapter again but make notes at the end of that because what happens is it's very unlikely to you going to come back and read the same book again the whole book and let alone like reading like the point of making notes out of it becomes very laborious ma'am this economics current affair and ir current affair how to manage uh, can you repeat the question i my question is that economics for example budget comes in february it is in midst of that we have every resource we have made everything prelims is also there and we have to manage all these things so at that point what to do economic survey budget all okay so uh, again you don't have to read the whole budget document or the economic survey document you have the compilations right somebody is compiling you pick up some compilation and you take from do not take the entire survey entire survey is useless it's not useful for us pick up those things from the compilation that you think will be able to use in the exam only that much nothing nothing more is needed so okay these points are important for prelims so let me just mark them and this topic or this concept that the survey has talked about i can use it in the uh, actual exam so this year survey was talking about how a uh, female labor force participation rate calculation in india the process the calculation is uh, not perfect and that could be why our uh, numbers are so low like one of the reasons why the numbers are so low i found that point to be very interesting i just saw it in a compilation ka isme so i thought okay this is something i can use it in multiple papers gs3 gs1 in the social section so whatever you feel as useful you pick that up do not read the entire uh, compilation of survey just browse through it and see okay this is important i can use this is important i can use and that's it budget also likewise so budget just pick up like key schemes and everything and you think where you can use it otherwise just reading will get you nowhere no so you think so there is this uh, uh, scheme for uh, pvtg so i'll use it in anthropology or there was a scheme for wetland conservation something so if there's any environment question i'll just write you know these kind of schemes are important you know very specific uh, that ecosystem related schemes like one for wetlands one for you know uh, lakes and etc so be very conscious pick up only that is needed ma'am Uh, what, what is your strategy for the gs4 ethics paper and when it comes to case study it's very difficult to give a balanced answer so can you please tell about that uh, so for the case studies i uh, used to download topper's copies and uh, i used to write like there are a lot of uh, ethics topper copies right so look at the case study in those and then i used to attempt it on my own not looking at their answer and then i used to see how they wrote and then did that for several several uh, uh, case studies and then i understood like i developed a sense of from their answers only i developed a sense of how to write a balanced uh, uh, case study 
and this was something again so uh, if you properly analyze previous years questions case studies are thematic there are some very specific themes so for all these themes i had uh, pre made introductions and conclusions like conclusions that included quotes of some philosophers or stuff like that uh, so with these two things and the key in ethics is finishing the paper which requires a lot of practice so do practice like a lot ethics paper is actually very short if you if you focus on that paper specifically it gives you a lot of returns uh, so focus on that paper specifically and practice yeah section a as well you have all the syllabus topics right make notes on that same strategy as per any other paper but make sure you are including some examples some quotes and everything from you don't have to search for them separately like when you're reading newspaper if you feel okay this, this is such a good attitude to have towards life you pick that up and put it in your uh, that attitude topic so being like you know value adding things and practice ethics paper requires a lot of practice to finish it especially this year's ethics paper which was really lengthy so focus on the practice part and when you're practicing be like happily use the previous year's uh, toppers copies so that you can evaluate how you're doing ma'am ma'am can you please tell us how to cover gs4 and how to interlink it with current affairs also uh, like that is what i was saying here uh, just go topic wise and try to incorporate examples from uh, uh, whatever newspaper that you are reading and practice a lot which is like very important ma'am where ma'am ma'am could you please share your strategy for anthropology optional as i am starting from next month and when should when it should be completed or finished ideally there is see again like if you have to pick take anything from my journey like there is there is no formula just do it your way <laughs> but uh, just know how to do it so stick to the syllabus points make notes from even if you're taking coaching from anywhere make sure your notes is organized as per the syllabus make sure you have introductions and conclusions and you should understand properly in anthropology or any optional for that matter make sure you are having that understanding and see if can if you can utilize some whatever newspaper you are reading you can put that uh, in in it so there's no uh, one set of period you know i should ideally finish everything no it's not like do it at your own pace but do it right because once you do your optional right like it will really take you places ma'am when when it should be completed uh, i think 6 or 7 months should be fine and ma'am what is the role of toppers copy so yeah this is like a resource freely available on the internet uh, the best thing to do it do is look at those questions in those copies write answers your answers and then evaluate that way you immediately know what is that person doing differently from you and you can keep on uh, changing so we all practice answers right uh, whatever daily answer writing program whatever instead of those you can actually rely on topper copies the questions that they have the answers that they have you write answer you evaluate you write answer you evaluate that way you are like comparing yourself with some of those who clear the exam with good marks ma'am what's the right time for joining test series after the course completed or after the 3 4 months completed uh so it's like once you have finished the syllabus to some extent then you can because if you've not finished the syllabus or made notes what will you go and write it can be so it, when you're preparing or when you're still in this process you can maybe make notes uh, sorry practice answers from and the both, purpose both test series compulsory for joining like uh, optional and uh, gs both we yes, should yes. join uh, both test series yes because see it's a competitive exam you have to write a test uh, whether you join test series is yeah. not uh, secondary thing so it's a competitive exam so you should write as many tests as you can so that you can be on the autopilot mode on that final day best coaching is a right best like and, see i <laughs> i keep saying this it really doesn't matter You, if you're sincere, pick up anything. Any of them are equally good or equally bad. Yes. So you pick anything. 
and you practice you practice a lot revise them it's like it's okay anything is fine for prelims for mains for anything anything is fine <laughs> there is another question for uh, and, and new shiver section uh, mostly uh, news is not uh, relevant for the students uh, we should uh, full uh, read the news for full completely or uh, in some portion we, we should have re- uh, chhodna chahiye leave karna chahiye us from the newspaper yeah ma'am yeah yeah so definitely read whatever is full important completely news for all the news uh, see you have syllabus you have previous year's questions now you look at the newspaper and you you just browse through the newspaper right page 1 <coughs> page 2 page 3 you feel this is important note it down or like take a note mental note if you feel some some days nothing is important you have nothing to pick up from the newspaper fine you have read newspaper like any other aam aadmi and uh, close it and then move on with your life uh, but some day you can get some really nice pun that day you pick up like don't be so rigid like whatever works you try to make it work no ma'am in telegram uh, in waziram portal uh, some news uh, relevant news is provided in portal they are sufficient for the reading or we should uh, extra reading of uh, there is no like one one formula so for me uh, reading newspaper worked so for you if that portal works then well and good so see what works for you for a uh, standard textbooks i prepared notes from the textbooks like you have you have textbooks for every uh, syllabus like paper 2 paper 1 you have syllabus hmm uh to some extent when i was making my notes i not notes but some material i may have used ma'am okay so see there is lot of information on the internet but pick what you feel is relevant see let, if you're studying a topic let's say 5g or anything you know you should be knowing what you're looking for in the internet don't let the internet tell you what you're looking for so you look for it ha so that comes when you look at the previous year's questions when you practice them when you look at the syllabus constantly you know okay upsc never asks this kind of thing so let me just keep them away but these things the application of 5g in health is very important for me so if i can find this information somewhere so let me note it down yeah right right the idea is just be very active don't be passive you pick up what is important for you what you feel is important that is what will make you stand out so whatever you feel important you pick up ma'am what should be our approach for essay writing like i started my preparation a couple of months back and i i feel i don't have enough content for essays then then so okay don't write essays right away <laughs> then it's okay like uh, just keep looking at the topper essays just to get an idea of how essays are written if you only look at the previous year's questions you'll get intimidated by the kind of essays just remember like no matter how philosophical the question is your answer has to be like an administrator answer so that means you should be able to open up the topic so how well you can open up the topic you can get some insights from the topper copies just look at them don't write essays right away keep looking at them so that you'll get a sense of okay this is how it is done always keep looking at top of copies essay when you're bored just go through them you will learn a lot from them i learned a lot so you can also like benefit ma'am how to manage revisions one day before the exam ha so this as well so do not keep uh, basically keep revising again and again do not keep revisions towards the end of the exam so like i said i always had a thumb rule anything that i write my notes should be revised thrice before going to the exam so uh, i followed the spaced repetition technique maybe you can just learn about that technique it's very effective so anything i study to wait one week later and then again from one week i'll pick it up and read this way it stays longer so you keep on revising uh, continuously do not push your revision towards some day at the end which will never come 
and keep your sources and notes very crisp that way you can manage it no if your sources and if your notes is too much you won't even feel like revising it so when you when you do everything by yourself i mean like when you own up the process when you make your notes and everything it becomes very interesting ma'am ma'am here yeah. when should you write answer writing practice whenever you feel comfortable whenever until then you can just keep looking at the copies see answer writing we all studied till 10th class no we used to write answers there also so suddenly here coming here answer writing is like a like something alien but it's not it's still answer writing so first believe that you can see the idea that you asked me when can i start you you already know how to write answers you just have to practice answers for this uh, uh, set of questions so whenever you feel comfortable to start writing answers you start writing answers until then look at uh, answers written by some of the toppers so that you get an understanding of okay how answers should be written for this exam because uh, writing answers you obviously know you wrote uh, you know school may and then you graduated and stuff so whenever you comfortable you can go ahead and write but do practice i'm telling you like let those first 100 crappy answers flow and get out of your way the one out first question uh, answer will be an improved answer and there on you'll only like go up but don't be scared of those first 100 crappy answers ma'am yeah ma'am if we are uh, reading uh, some things uh, yeah, um, some so, um, going through some subject uh, we find that uh, we are missing uh, something at the same point that uh, that should be read uh, so how to deal with that form ma'am like i do not understand like uh, if we are uh, studying uh, polity uh, and at the same time we are feeling that uh, uh, in uh, modern history i have to read that topic uh, because it will fetch more hmm. marks then uh, uh, it creates a um, uh, like fear of missing out something right, right. then how to deal with that fomo ma'am okay so this fomo will also be always be there so just put it aside for once and you stick to your basics whatever you have read and the rest whatever you have to cover you will cover through the test series so actually the test series people they are making things easy for us they are going to get us you know some obscure things some important things everything in a paper so you attempt there if you know you attempt you do not know you come back home and you see okay this is something you know that i can learn from this test series you can make a note that you can uh, hello ma'am Uh, yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, regarding the test series, uh, which you mentioned that we should first go for sectional test series and yeah. then full length. So, is it for means pre uh, test series or for the main answer one? Ah, uh, uh, pre. I was talking about even for the mains, you can pretty much use the formula. You can use the f- sectional test to revise and finish the syllabus, even for mains, and then you can start attempting uh, the full length. Because. Uh, Means uh, as I have uh, heard from other toppers, means uh, they are told that where they start their pre preparation uh, before three or four months before the pre, and before that they prepare for mains. Hmm. So it's right to uh, start with the uh, pre test series in the month of September October means kind of. Uh, Generally, I uh, did pre test series only two months before prelims. Until then, I did not like touch uh, prelims, anything to do with prelims. and in the rest of the periods it was only mains test series so sectional tests and then full length tests whatever i felt like practice okay thank you so my my suggestion is just go to the syllabus of all the optionals whichever you find interesting which you think is manageable and look at the length of the syllabus look at how direct are the questions look at the trend of marks in the recent years just look at everything and decide it's okay irrespective of what background or you are from you can pick up any subject and study that much we can do we we graduated right so this much we are capable of even if you are from an engineering background you can study history if you know how to study and if you are interested in that subject a little bit there are people who score with any optional so it's it's it becomes scoring for you when you find this you know interesting and stuff